I've been doing a projection mapped Christmas show on my house for five years, and this is my 2023 update. I'm gonna be going over all the main components of everything that I have in this show, so that at the end of the video, you have an understanding of what an undertaking like this would actually take. Also, I'm gonna be answering some very common questions that I get on the videos of years past. Inspired by Walt Disney World's Happily Ever After, this all started for me back in 2019, with an Optima 1080 short throw projector, and I spent about 100 hours trying to learn Adobe's character animator, which eventually my friends just dubbed Christmas South Park. The next year, we upgraded to the Optima 1090, and then last year, we made a huge upgrade to the Epson L1300U with a short throw lens. I'm gonna list out all of the components in the description and in a comment below so that you don't have to remember all these things that I'm throwing out there. My main gripe is my projection surface that I'm projecting onto. The brick that I have is just a black hole of a projection surface. In the first year using that Optima 1080, I really tried to focus my animations over my windows because my windows were mostly white and then they also had a shade down, which was also white. So it was a good projection surface, but the brick was just terrible. Next, I moved on to five retractable screens that were pulled down each show by a Harbor Freight winch. I braved that for two years. Thankfully, we didn't have any issues or accidents, but anytime I was away from home, I was terrified that the show was running and a winch that could pull 35 500 pounds was just pulling those screens down and it could have been a disaster. So that's why I moved away from it. Even with an 8,000 lumen projector, which is what I have now, it was still not enough to project onto the brick. So I covered the front of my home, except for the windows in these white sheets. And the 8,000 lumen projector plus the white sheet gives me an amazing result. The sheets do look pretty terrible during the day, but once the sun goes down, you can't even tell that they're there because I project an image of my house onto my house. Over the years, I've also added some LED lights that can be individually controlled. They're also called pixels. I first started with my roof line and my gutter line, and then I added in my magnolias. And then this year, I got these three dumpy little Christmas trees. After Christmas last year, they were on a steep sale, and I hacked them because the LEDs can be individually controlled. If you keep up with my shorts, I did a series on these little trees, how I hacked them, the issues that I had. I ended up plugging these five volt pixels into a 12 volt power supply and blew up all the trees. I put new pixels on them and now they're incorporated into my show. I don't have any other major updates for 2023. Lots of little minor stuff, but nothing major. I added the trees. Most of my time this year went to the birth of our second child, my actual day job. And also I got a little Christmas show set up for my dad. I got him three of the Walmart trees. We added it in his roof line and we wrapped a crepe myrtle in the middle of his yard. So he has a nice little Christmas show that runs now, which is awesome. And I'm very happy about that. I did order two 350 watt moving heads that I plan to incorporate into my show. But I guess thankfully they're not here yet, so I didn't have to learn how to do that just yet. They should be here by March, and then I can spend the rest of the year learning how to control them and then incorporating them into next year's show. The projector is where it all starts. Most people need a short throw projector, because if you think about a non-short throw, let's say the ratio was one to one, your house is 60 feet wide, you're gonna have to be 60 feet back to project onto it. That's why we go with short throw projectors. A projector can be 20, 30 feet away and you can get a wide spread and cover your entire house. If your house is light colored, you're probably good to go with both standard projectors that are three to 4,000 lumens and it'll look great. Once you get a projector picked, then you're gonna have to decide on software. And there's a ton of different software that you can choose from, from something as simple as PowerPoint to DaVinci Resolve or After Effects, which is what I use. I don't actually recommend After Effects because it has a monthly fee, which I absolutely hate about it. So I've been pushing people to something that's free. And I believe that DaVinci Resolve has a free version. That's where I would start. Also, if this is way too intimidating for you, nowadays they actually have online services that can do this for you. Some need you to map your house first. You send the map to them and they'll totally create a show for you. Others I've heard can even do it from a picture. So you get the projector, take a picture of your home, and then they'll handle the rest. All right. Next, we need to talk about how do we actually get the video that we made in our software to the projector. And there are tons of ways to accomplish this. Some people use old laptops or computers or you run long HDMI cords. 
I'm using a Raspberry Pi running what's called Falcon Pi Player. It's a free software and it's open source and it is incredibly powerful. There's forums with tons of active users. There's how-to videos, just tons of resources. I'm using three Raspberry Pis to run my show. Could probably get it done with two. One is the master, two remotes. One is running the pixels, one is running the audio, and the other one is feeding the video source to the projector. This might be a little too far in the weeds for this video, but the reason you want your master running the audio is because the master is gonna be sending out sync packets to the remotes, and you don't want the audio to be jumping around to stay synced with the master because you'll audibly hear those jumps. Thankfully, the video can be done by a remote because you can't see with your eye the little jumping that the video is doing to stay synced with the master. You might look at this and be surprised what I'm about to say, but I am barely scratching the surface of what Falcon Pi Player can do. Essentially, I just have some light sequences and video files and it's just running on a schedule. The schedule's done in Falcon Pi Player and it just loops the video. Due to the projector that I have, per the user's manual, that projector cannot experience relative humidity over 80%. When I had the Optimas, it was no issue. I had them in the box. They were just venting out of the box and pulling air in. Never had an issue with humidity at all. This projector, due to the cost, I'm not willing to risk it being in higher than 80% humidity, which in Southeast Louisiana is basically every day. So to mitigate that issue, I tried a bunch of different things. First was to try to put a small window unit inside the massive birdhouse that I have up there and that just wasn't gonna work. The temperature swings were way too high. It would get all the way down to 50 degrees, back up to 100, I just didn't wanna do it. So what I came up with was these two inline fans and these four inch ducts that run out to the giant birdhouse and back. One is pulling air from the house, pushing it out to the box. The other fan is pulling air from the projector and pushing it back into the house. So we're just circulating that air, keeping it nice and dry inside the giant birdhouse, keeping that projector happy. So we're removing the heat from the projector and we're also providing low humidity air. I'm utilizing Home Assistant to control the fans. It just turns them on when the projector comes on, turns them off a few minutes after the projector turns off just to get everything cool. It's also turning on and off all my power supplies for the LED lights that I have and pretty much controls everything else in my house. If it wasn't obvious at this point, I do have that giant birdhouse that's holding everything up there. I can run it on clear days, super humid days, even stormy days. That thing is a tank and rain or shine. Well, technically not shine because then you couldn't see the projector, but even if it's storming, we are running the show. The roof hinges open as you've seen to allow access. I have gas struts that really take most of the weight of that roof. On a previous iteration, I did not have gas struts and a gust of wind blew that top down into my head and fool me once, shame on me, but you will not fool me twice. So I added those gas struts. I'm using what's called projector glass on the front of this box. Supposedly, if you use regular glass, it'll actually block a good bit of light. So I searched around, it wasn't too expensive. And again, links will be in the description below. The box is insulated, mostly to try to keep that dry air in. It's pretty poorly insulated, so it doesn't do that much. I have a small dehumidifier in there that runs anytime the fans are not running. So a vast majority of the time during the night and during the day, that dehumidifier is running, keeping everything nice and dry in there. I had these two zoos, I believe is the name of the company. They're like these five in one sensors that I got off Amazon. They're also being pulled into Home Assistant. It does light motion, temperature, tamper, and humidity. So I'm using that to monitor my humidity up there as well as using them for security. One really important note here is that on the master where the audio is coming out of that little sound blaster USB card, I'm then splitting the audio. One goes to the FM transmitter so that people can hear it in their cars. The other one goes to a really small Bluetooth speaker that's not using the Bluetooth. It just has an auxiliary in so that if you're a passerby on the sidewalk, you can also enjoy the show as well. I do not turn it up very loud. I don't wanna disturb my neighbors. So now for common questions. Two of the most common questions. One is, why do you have two ducts? Why not just pull air from your house, push it out to the box? And the other one is about security. So let me answer the duct one first. The projector would be totally happy if I just had one duct. It would get cool, dry air, and we would vent the rest to the atmosphere. It would be fine. If I was pulling air just from my house and delivering it to the box, that would keep my house negatively pressured. 
so that if I opened a door or window, air would want to go in. Even when all the doors and windows closed, it would still be negatively pressured, so through all the cracks and everything, air would want to be coming into the home. So that's why I'm circulating the air from the projector back into the home to just keep it neutral. I'm not positively or negatively pressuring my house, I'm just circulating that air. The other question I get asked a lot is, what about security? First and foremost, I'm blessed enough to live in a neighborhood where we don't have much theft or vandalism at all, but that doesn't mean I take a lot of precautions. I'm not gonna tell you all the ones that I take, but generally speaking, I've got those Zoos sensors that do have vibration sensors in them so they can sense someone tampering. I also have the box tied into my home security system so that if it gets opened or somebody messes with it too much, it'll set off my home alarm. I have multiple locks. It's attached down to a few different things. And I have a couple other things up my sleeve that I'm not gonna tell you about, but generally I feel pretty good. Obviously at the end of the day, if somebody wants that projector, they're probably gonna get it, but they might destroy it in the process. I do plan, plan to do a full tutorial series on how to projection map in 2024. I don't know what that's gonna look like yet, but a lot of people have asked for it. So I'm gonna try to commit to doing that in 2024. No, no kids on the horizon right now. Also the full show, I'll put a link to that and maybe a card. So if you wanna see the full show and what it looks like, you can see that. If you have any comments or questions about anything that I've done, please put them below. People have given me tons of great ideas just through asking what they thought was a dumb question. So I welcome any and all feedback or questions. Please comment. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I greatly appreciate it and Merry Christmas.